Hello, I'm Philip Savile and I'm going to be telling you about fully abstract models for effectful lambda calculi. What this work is about is a category theoretic construction which takes in a model of an effectful call by value language and returns one that is both adequate and fully abstract. Why is this interesting? Well, it goes back to the heart of program language theory, namely to this property of contextual equivalence, which characterizes when two programs have the same observable behavior. As is well known, the quantification overall context in the definition makes it difficult to reason about contextual equivalence, and so we want semantic techniques which allow us to either prove or refute when two programs are contextually equivalent. To this end, we're interested in the extent to which semantic equality in some model relates to contextual equivalence, for example, in the same way that we're interested in soundness and completeness in logic. The corresponding properties are called adequacy and full abstraction, and so the reason we're interested in adequate and fully abstract models is because in such models, semantic equality completely characterizes contextual equivalence. Typically, adequacy can be proven by some kind of logical relations argument, but full abstraction proves to be much more difficult. This is borne out by the long history of research into full abstraction, of which the classic paper is Plotkin's, where he shows that the domains model for PCF is not fully abstract, although it is if one adds a parallel or construct. This sparked off a great deal of research, of which the one that I'm going to highlight here is O'Hearn and Rieke's uh, fully abstract model for domains using logical relations. Since then, a lot of the research has focused on languages of recursion, which we're not doing here. Instead, we're focusing on a language which doesn't have recursion, but has an arbitrary choice of monadic effect. So, even though we don't capture PCF, we do capture a wide range of interesting languages. How does this work? Well, you choose a syntactic signature, so you choose a specification of the language, named the base types, the effect operations, and so on, together with a semantic model for this language. And then, subject to some conditions on the model, then our construction will yield an adequate and fully abstract semantic model. For example, you might be interested in a language with natural numbers and booleans as the base types, together with primitives for true, false, the natural numbers, and operations for reading, boolean operations, and so on. And a natural semantic interpretation for this is to use the reader monad on the category of sets, and then what our construction will yield from this is a fully abstract model of read-only state. Alternatively, one might take a language with a base type of real numbers together with the classic operations used in probabilistic programming and then take as a semantic model the category of quasi borel spaces and its probability monad, which is a really nice semantic model for reasoning about probabilistic programming. Our construction will then yield a fully abstract model of an idealized probabilistic programming language. In general, if you choose a signature of base types, effect operations, and primitives, together with a Cartesian closed category with coproducts, a strong monad, and an interpretation, plus some conditions on your um, category and on your interpretation of uh, base types, effect operations, and primitives, then our construction will yield a fully abstract model of the computational lambda calculus with those chosen constants and with some types. How does this work? The idea is taken or inspired by that of O'Hearn and Rieke, which in turn takes inspiration from models of impredicative polymorphism. So we build a model in which every morphism satisfies every logical relation, which we might think of as every single predicate over that model. We do this in two stages. We first build a category of relations and relation-preserving morphisms, and then we internalize this relation-preserving property by restricting to those relations that are called concrete. The toolbox consists of completely categorical constructions, so we use a categorical treatment of logical relations, fibrations, top-top lifting and top-top closure for handling monads and some types respectively, as well as a categorical generalization of O'Hearn and Rieke's concreteness property. Of course, I don't have time to say how it all fits together in this five-minute talk, but if you come along to the talk or have a look in the paper, of course it's all explained there.